Welcome to day 7 of my 3D asset tutorials. Last time we looked into ambient occlusion and how we got rid of those nasty seam lines that was in the texture. We went, we did that by going through Photoshop and then deleting the actual black um, background and then liquefying the edges of the actual texture map and it gave you this result here. Today we'll be discussing about normal maps. I know we touched on this subject last time, but today I will be going into more in depth about, the, about how the normal maps work and how to generate an initial normal map and basically how to do the low to high and high to low poly kind of techniques that is used in industry. If you're halfway through, if you just started looking through these tutorials, please refer to my website. It is www.andrewboo3d.com. In here, it contains on the home page the first four of my tutorials. And then if you pop into my tutorial section, you'll see all my other tutorials up to date. This is day seven, so that will be um, on the website later today. As you go on the home page, you'll see many of the assets that I've done in the past. And it's a good example to look at. You know, especially when you looking into creating more assets for your game or 3D art or whatever you're doing. Okay, let's let's begin our tutorial. Now, I know last time, like I said, I explained the basis of normal mapping. Now, I'll go into more in depth. Basically, what normal map is it's fake lighting using a, like a RGB value texture it actually uses the the red green and blue values channels in a texture image when when you open a new you know a new texture let's open up a new folder a new you know texture fi file this here is a default 1024 1024k you know squared texture but if you go in the channels you'll see RGB and in red green blue normal maps is uh, like a texture map using these three channels as direction to dictate the the actual faces and the, the subsurfaces, the subsurface of the actual model. As a result, it looks like an image like this. It's using the um, green, blue, and red values to to dictate how the faces of every subsurface is pointing. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, how do you tell what um, what direction each channel is facing? Well, it's quite simple. The RGB is a universal code amongst, you know, the 3D world. If you look on the X, Y, and Z axis on your 3D software, it's always going to be green for Y, red for X, and blue for Z, and that is the same thing for normal maps. You know, green will be up and down, will always be up and down, red will always be side to side, and blue will be always front and back. So, the more red you have, the more pinky color it will be, which means it'll be more uh, directional information along the x-axis 
and so on and so forth. This means that when it is shown on the model, depending on where you look at it, it will always will always have that detail on there, creating like a fake lighting, giving it a more more uh, detailed look. Now, one of the techniques that people use is known as transfer maps. You get to this by going to your rendering setting and then lighting and shading and transfer maps. In here, you can transfer all sorts of data between two models. You have normal, displacement, diffuse, shaded, alpha, and ambient. Just like how we did the ambient occlusion where we actually rendered out a subsurface texture with a ambient occlusion shade attached to it. This does the same but except instead of the, using the material of a instead of using the material subsurface to render out the texture what it does, it takes the light information that is seen on the texture, on that actual model. So, and then transfer it to another model, creating a, an ambient occlusion map. So it's a good way, it's a good way to do that. Now, you may ask yourself, what's the difference between normal map and bump map? Bump app is a grayscale bump uh, texture, kind of like an, a height map where it uses white as high, a black is, you know, back, you know, so it's pushing, making it like a relief. Now it's similar to bump map, but the difference is bump map is it, only efficient when you're using low resolution kind of games where mon normal maps aren't so effective where the more high resolution game you go into the more uh, bump maps are ineffective bump maps are mainly used for like bigger objects same as high maps high maps are only used for bigger kind of objects like uh, like environment pieces, you know, like buildings and such. For smaller, um, for smaller assets, it'll be better to use normal maps. All engines, like Unreal Engine for UDK, um, Unity, all the other, all the games engine use normal maps. Very rare they use bump maps nowadays. It's because it's using free values, free actual that normal maps actually using free free um values opposed to one to create the detail. So no matter what angle you look, it always you always will see a little bit of the actual normal map. So, to start this process of transform maps, we need a more high poly. Now, some people take their objects into Modbox and then increase the resolution that way. You don't always have to do that. I don't do that. I do it when it's necessary for like a big assets, something that requires a lot of detail, but simple assets like this, it's not needed. It's really not needed. But what I like to do to generate that basic um, transfer maps, I do like to do this process anyway. You start by duplicating it. A simple duplication. I just duplicate it by going to the command and D for duplication or you can go to edit and duplicate there. And then go to your layers 
and add a new layer, create layer from selected and call it salt low and set the color and it will leave this one behind now this is where you do a little bit more advanced um, modeling I would now just create another layer for this floor so it could be hidden there you go as you probably see this is black don't worry about that the reason being that's black is because of the ambient occlusion because when you when we rendered out the ambient occlusion the light bounced and light cannot reach underneath because of this floor and how high this actual model is in comparison so it can I mean that's why it's black because it hasn't got that um, enough gap to to add light light rays into it the reason being there's a little light around here is for bouncing when light light bounces and it bounces onto these bits here but it cannot reach these that's why you know underneath that's why it's more black underneath so we start off making my high poly by selecting faces and just select these ones here And then you go into Polygon Tool and press Extrude. You turn that to the thickness to zero because we're not getting any thickness yet, but we're offsetting it by one. That's too much. The so 0 0.1. Probably think to yourself. Okay, why are we adding to monitoring? You're probably thinking, you know, why are we, why are we adding polys and adding more to monitoring when we already you feed mapped it? As you add more polys, it doesn't matter about adding to monitoring as long as it's within the the boundary lines, you know, the actual scenes, it doesn't matter because what you're actually doing is you're cutting up UVs at the same time. See, it's you're cutting up the UVs at the same time. This means that, this actually means that when you, when you actually come to transfer maps, all the data, because both the shells on both objects is overlaying all the information that is on the holly poly will be transferred to the low poly but as a norm map because it's overlaid the two UV shells are overlaid so it's obtaining the same information but with a normal map when doing it out so this is why you're on this is why you've you've this is why you, you feed map that actual model first before you, you do anything because then you're creating that actual um, you're creating that you're creating that ability to overlay your textures and be able to render out correctly as an normal map so it's just a simple case of just adding you know, adding more and more, um, it's just, it's all about just adding more detail to what you, to what you want. Basically. You 
know, it, it depends. This is where your actual creativity comes into it. You know, what you want to be seen as a normal map. Obviously, you can't do certain, date, um, certain details. Some of it has to be sculpted in, which you do in Modbox. And as the tutorial has progressed, I may do that to one of the models, import it and sculpt in data, you know, details. Obviously, it depends on what object you have. Object like this cannot be, you know, can't, can't do that. It, well, it's not the case you can't do it, it's more the case that you wouldn't need to do it because it's just a just a silk grinder, it doesn't need that much detail. Not in comparison to other models like a face of some sort. Now, next thing to do, what I normally do, I'll go back into my modeling and then find, uh, where is it? It's a uh, there's a certain button which I'm trying to find. I do apologize for this. This is a new layout, so I'm still getting used to the layout. Uh, da, 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 create polygon, and there is add division. This basically adds division based on the, the geometry and how you how you create the object. As you can see, it split each um, edge, every edge, in half by the power of two. So it's done it vertically and horizontally. It doesn't look that. Um, high poly yet that's because it doesn't edit any of the actual um, edges you have to go in and individually do that which is okay because as you can see in the UV editor it's just added those lines that's all it's done it hasn't cut up the UVs or anything like that you wouldn't need to worry about that because you don't touch any of these because whatever normal map is generated from this will be transferred onto the low poly. So it, it's just a case of editing these um, edges, smoothing them out, editing them, making them better. You don't have to worry about distortion because what will happen what will happen is all that information that is obtained here is transferred into that um, actual model anyway into the low poly anyway So it's just the case of editing each each edge accordingly. It may take some time. But once it's done, you know, you don't once it's done you can start the process. It's a pain to do. What I've basically done, I just selected all the edge loops like so, and I'm just going to expand them out as a scratch. This is a way you can make some interesting looks based on 
interesting uh, designs based on the actual um, scaling and, and so on and so forth. Like so, it's just a case of going back and reshaping it back how it was meant to be. See, I like that actual design. I think that's quite groovy and it'll look really good for actual model. Like I say, it's just a case of going back in and editing these faces based on the actual model and so on, so on and so forth. I know it's a pain to do this, but once it's done, you know, you won't have to worry too much. And because it's, you already UV mapped it, all that data is still obtained here. Which means, no matter what you manipulate, because they, it's still the same UV map, mapping here, any information that's obtained here will be transferred onto low poly, as I keep saying. I would be careful because it can correct artifacts within the normal map, if not done correctly. No, I say it's just a basic chance of just adding geometry, polys, and detail. Don't worry about, you know, don't worry about the poly count or anything like that. Just think about aesthetics, you know, what you want it to look. Again, I, like I said, this is where your creativity creativity comes into it because as you um, as you creatively you know, edit your model to ha to how you want it to look will determine the actual final result as you can see It's all about tweaking it and you know what you want to be seen and what not to be done to the actual model. This is a good trick to do when you when you want to save on efficiency model efficiency because what you'll find is you'll have a lot of polys, but in the same token, you'll have necessary geometry which you want to keep a certain look, but you can't because it's too high poly. Well, this process you can do in reverse. So if you have a high poly model mesh and you want to keep the that actual shape this is the way to go about doing it by creating the high poly first that you can then by creating the high poly first you can then you know create a good resolution and then transfer the data that you have onto a low model a low poly model to obtain a better 
and more efficient mall because then what you can do you can lower your poly count accordingly based on your typology opposed to the detailing because then the detailing will be put into normal map again it's it's all about what you want to model and what would be best in that actual normal map now as you can see it's a bit um, a bit jerky around this area that is because of the normal the normals the normal direction is all hard here so go to normal direction and normal display and soft edge and as you can see it smooths it out again now I'm up to that bit where I'm happy with it this is still some would still cast this as slow poly for 3500 3, but for the object itself it is rather high for a salt dispenser no way would you need that amount of polys not in a million years so so this is where you can use the transfer map to onto that lower lower poly that we created that we created just enable it first of all select this and correct layer from selected and call this high turn it off there's the low poly and we start filling this in the target mesh will be salt shape 1 basically we're saying whatever map we are generating will be put onto this this is the actual target this is where the normal map will be placed onto and then source meshes is where the actual mesh all the data is come from it's the source of the actual normal map it's the the start of it you know where it actually originated from so this is where you select the high take away the low and select the high and add selected and when you go to the low and you add the selection there so shape shape salt 2 will be the target with the high poly will be shape 2 normal map now this is where you can set the normal maps you know the full format it depends on what you're looking for it depends what you're working with if you're working with sub substance designer like I do go to bitmap you know they are all always exported in as bitmaps so it makes sense to import them as bitmaps considering that's the actual um, format that you use now this is where the file format it comes out as as a file, as a model as an asset it don't need to be 2k so half it to 1024 assign assigned shader this means it will connect the normal map to this actual sh shader what we have it signed with the occlusion map and I would say back and close it will take some time as you can see it's two percent three percent so I think I'll finish it off here finish the recording and we'll come back today and um, to back, come back tomorrow with day 
eight with the result of the actual um, transfer map. Thank you for watching.